Okay, let's move to the last tutorial of this model. So after everything we cover, I think this will be super easy. You will find your way around. And at this point also you should have all this idea of this dictionary, SB skins, SB solutions, everything that is happening there should be clear. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to solve the older equations, okay? So this is the subchuck two. This is a, a very severe case that we have an interaction of different chart wave or in these continuities, okay? So this is a standard case. Every CFD solver should pass this test, okay? But we need also to use the right numerics. So these are the equations that we're solving. Now we're solving the whole set of equations, okay? But with no viscosity or, or all the equations. By the fact, the fact that you are neglecting viscosity doesn't mean that they are easy. And actually they are more complicated because you don't have viscosity. And usually viscosity is that factor will damp or it smooths your solution. So this case have analytical solution, but also experimental values or, or experimental solutions. It's a classical also this experiments like stuff like that, that you can measure all these quantities, all the values. So basically our setup will be something like that, like this, initial conditions, and then we're going to have a high and low pressure region with these values. And then in one instant, we're going to break this wall, this di diaphragm, and then we're going to have this system of chuck waves. So see that we're going to have a, an expansion fan, a content discontinuity, and a normal chuck. All of these are difficult to, to solve. Normal chuck, we know that is a discontinuity. This is a transition, a smooth transition, but also difficult to capture. And then we have the content disc discontinuity, which is also difficult. A content discontinuity is where you have different a difference in, in uh, in density values, but then the other properties are continuous. So you can see this as a free surface, okay? Something like that. So see that you have here, for instance, velocity continuous, and then you have density, that content is continuity, kind of telling that you have maybe two different fluid, but this case is the same fluid, yeah? So this is a very difficult problem, and let's see what happens. So this should be the solution that we should get, no? We have an exact, so exact solution, and the red one is the one that after we adjust the numeric a little bit, we're getting something very accurate, okay? So it could, it could be better by getting our final mesh, okay? But see that this is this is a nice solution. So you are going to find this, this case in this directory. And at this point, no, you know what is happening, so I, I think you should get easier to the solution. But what I'm going to ask you first, we're going to use a new solver, raw pimple phone. So previously we have been using pimple phone, piece of phone, okay, which is an incompressible solver. Now we move to raw pimple phone. That is a solver that we can use for this kind of problem, compressible flows and high speed flows, okay? Then later we have a model that we're going to talk about how to set up compressible solvers, okay, advanced model. But we're going to use this one. And remember, compressible solvers, you need to work with absolute pressure values, okay? And they are, Okay, if you put there zero, it's going to diverge because that is in the vacuum and it's not compatible with the, the physics. So here you have the steps. Also, by the way, you, you, you're going to find in the folder Python a small script where you can compute the analytical solution and then we compare with open font. So there is some sampling involved. And basically this is what you're going to get. Okay, with the default setup that you're going to get, you're going to get this this output so see that there is a difference so even if you are resolving the discontinuities kind of you are missing information what we want is something like this okay so remember that well here you have some hints and probably you can get easily also you have the exercise so later we can discuss this during the the q a session but we want to get this one and this is what we're getting in the standard setup so let's see what happens here okay so as you go to uh to the folder already here 101 fbn and then you have chuck to you you have it there okay so i was just testing here let, let me do some cleaning okay so this is a simple mesh okay so it's a pair for orthogonal mesh if you want you can get the triangular the principles will be the same but let just to show you okay and then you can check your boundary conditions and so on so it's very standard you should get your way around here okay so this is what we have so see that it's a relative fine mesh also, okay, it's a 1D case. Okay, this is the spacing. So 1D means anti-anti and top and bottom anti, and then here you set out something. So 
to set out this case first, you go into constant and the new dictionary that you're going to have is this one, thermophysical properties. And here's where you set up the energy equation and working fluid. So see that we have this set up here. So here you choose that you are going to solve these formulations, the energy equation, okay? Using sensible internal energy. We have equation on state, perfect gas, transport co a constant. This is for viscosity model, but we set mu to zero. So these older equations and then Prandtl number. This is related. This is DCP. This is heat of fusion related to uh, mass transfer that we don't have here. And then you need to modify the molecular way of the working flow. So easy piece. There's no problem. Then in initial bonded initial conditions, this solver takes T, okay, temperature. Okay, so see that we have this set out everything zero gradient. Okay, but then we are going to use set fields to initialize that that this continuity is you look at the script, see that you have set fields and you do that initialization that you have here should be like this. Okay, so let's run the case. Uh, then uh, we go here, control D, let me open SV skin, SV solutions. Then you have the sampling and everything. So it's not a, a biggie that. So as we solution, see that here we, we have different equations. So see that we solve for pressure, E, H, no internal energy, enthalpy, then we have for density. Okay, so new solvers, new variables, and also the SV scheme will change a little bit. Okay, so see that here in this scheme we have few, remember that always you want here second order accuracy. So here I put a few variants of those methods, but then you have the new equations that are related to the energy equation. So see that we have phi E, phi K, this is kinetic energy, phi DP, also the terms that appears in your governing equations. Later we talk about this in the advanced models compressor flow, but if you want, you can go to the slides and see what is going on there. But also here you want second order accuracy. Okay, so here we're putting this, okay, linear win for, for everything. See here that this mesh is perfect, so we put limited one. You, we could use orthogonal, but remember, avoid that and put everything limited one, okay? FV solution, so see that this solver use pimple loop, so you will have the option here to control that, which is the say I disable. But see that we have this auction, and I commented a lot, so we're starting from a basic setup. See that this auction transonic is to solve no high speed flows in this case, so it's a correction. So if you have high, high speed, you put it to yes. So this is by default is, is off, it's no. But then if you have high speed, you put it to yes. And see that you have the traditional correctors, everything commented here. So let's run the, the case and let's see what happens. Okay, so. And that's all, okay, super fast. There is a Python script there that it will run. By the way, you need to have Python 3 installed in your computer, otherwise the, 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 this is key, this is step. Now the final step here is just using Python and here in this folder you have the script. So if you don't have Python and the graphical libraries, you are not going to get this. But see that here we have the output and we compare with open phone sampling the solution and see that your analytical solution is the blue line, and this is your actual solution in open phone, the red line. Okay, so we need to get closer to that, which by the way is you, is you check the other one. So see that pressure, yeah, you have some chips in there, but it's okay, you have in density. Yeah, there are some problems there. So it, the solution can be improved. Okay, but what we can do, first thing is the mesh is perfect, and it's already a fine mesh. We are using also a low delta T, okay? So we have a CFL, I think the CFL that I'm running, see that 09, okay? So we kind of play there. So again, we go back to our numerics, okay? So probably you see this distance, you, you, you might get also here lost in all. So see that I'm putting all these methods here, but you already have the default. So cell limited least square is okay. This is okay. This is okay also for energy. So don't waste your time here. So probably here you can put it 0 0.5, but this is a perfect mesh. Okay, so limited one is okay. Let's look at the SV solution at the loop. Usually here is your problem. So see that we have this here and let's do something. So remember that I recommend you previously that the, the 
the combinations you are using pimple i strongly recommend it to use two three one and what is happening here is that in this we have a new equation and we have gradients and we have the temperature gradients that those are very critical those, those, those applications so when you increase that one it's likely that you are going to improve everything so let's see that if i put to here and see that this simple modification likely it will solve a lot of problems so it is more time consuming see that you are doing that but what you are gaining is this accuracy so see that how this very small increment in your iterations can give you accuracy so it's much slower but this is what you want at the at the end of the day so please very often happen to me that people always come i want to run faster and i say yeah i can make it run super fast but i don't warranty accuracy so fix this idea in your mind you want accuracy you want a stable solution so do not go for 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 velocities or to to so fast solutions go for accuracy and stability and see that by just that small change you get a very accurate solution okay so see that we didn't have to get lost in all this sb scheme we know that this is already so maybe you can get some improvement by the way so using tbd so a small improvement but what we're looking for it is here so now let me comment a little bit about here so see that here we have the basic but as you recall the previous case see that in the previous case we enabled the consistent so i recommend you to enable always consistent always on the relax okay so see that on the relax and you have this momentum predictor that you can leave it like this okay comment it but is you uncomment that one if you have a commented the default value that is high wire in open phone is yes and just to show you remember that you can look for information is you go to the source code and look for that see here that it is already hardware and by the way in this diction in this file you will have some of the controls that you can take in your loops no simple on and, um, <coughs> and the different loops that you are using so you can open there and you will see there that you have see that you can take stuff like thermophysics flow momentum predictor transonic consistent and here you have the default option so the default one momentum predictor is true transonic is false consistent is false thermophysics is false models this is a new one i don't recall and flow this is for for frozen flow okay so see that i invite you also to to look for information like this and you can see the default values okay so see that here we have to enable transonic because we high speed enable consistent use on the relaxation and let me run okay so see that what we might get here is more accuracy but it might be difficult to see here but always recommend you to go like that okay so see that probably we're going a little bit <coughs> unbounded okay but it's always recommended now just to enable those options okay and for instance the other one okay that i want to show you that probably some tutorials in open phone you have seen that they put here 20 and i will show you what is happening so if we put 20 we know that it's going to do a lot of loops here okay it will predict when running it will repeat this 21 so everything will be a better approximation of the previous iteration but it's time consuming okay so i don't recommend you to go for that we have seen why now so there are clever ways but if we put 20 okay so see that we improve see that is better than the previous one and you can see but there is something else that probably you have seen this this control outer corrector residuals and let me explain what is happening here so remember that you have initial residuals so when you enable this and as you look at here your output what it's going to do that it's going to do the, all these loops but when your final residual here okay reach these values it's going to stop the looping so probably at the beginning it's going to do 20 iterations but then as it keep com converging and it reaches this tolerance 
it will automatically stop the loop and it will move to the next iteration. Okay, so that is what is happening. So this is another advice that you can go like this, 20 and then enable this. However, I don't like to, to use this one. I prefer to go to put five. If you want to do to use large time step and do this cyclically, better put, put five, okay, instead of using this one. But here, this is what is happening. And let me run and just to show you. So see that it's running and see that it's telling you that after three iterations, it converges. Okay, this outer loop, it converges to these values. You can change these values, by the way, no, but I think these values are okay that I'm giving you here. But at the beginning, if you go to the beginning, you will see that it's doing a lot of iterations and then it slowly, it is converging. Okay, let me just load solver and see that the first iteration, see that it's taking seven iterations and then it slowly is converging. Okay, so that is what you see. Okay, so now if I all go here, now you have your solution and see that a nicely bounded solution. So when you see the tutorial is in open form, that is what is happening. Which, by the way, is you have used commercial software. Commercial software use this. This is what is called the iterative method. So they're going to put a lot of iterations, but internally they have this convergence criterion, okay? And then when you reach this one, it will stop and move, okay? However, as I say in the previous one, I don't recommend you to do a lot of iterations, okay? So keep it between something between three and five, okay? It is better to reduce the time step to get no better accuracy, but this is in the case that you want to go large, very large times or when you have severe physics as in this case. Okay. So let me go back like this. And probably in this case, a good value will be this. So let me go here. Will be five. Okay. So you disable this and you let it run five cycles all <coughs> all, all, all the step size five cycles okay and you go here and you have your nice bounded solution okay so i see that it's not you you need to do try and error i see a lot of people oh don't let me move here change you understand what is happening so you know exactly where to do the modification which by the way i haven't shown you the solution so let me go here paraphone t and see that you have temperature okay so you have all your discontinuities here the shock wave the expansion fan and somewhere here there is this contact contact discontinuity so you have the derived fields, okay? We studied that in post-processing and I want raw. And here, see your contact discontinuity, okay? So this is it, okay? I hope you get the idea, okay? This is the recommended setup. And finally, also what you can do in this case, place with, you can play with this F skin. See, this solution is already accurate, but for instance, it might be better that instead of using linear win, let's use the mean mod, okay, which is a TBD and you might get that extra accuracy or even better, let's use this super B, okay? So you can run and you have to be careful with the super B because the super B is not recommended to use large time step, okay? Because it's that in that limit of the, the of the of the Swaby. So if you use lar large CFL numbers, probably more than three or four, it's likely it's going to diverge. Okay, so be careful with the super B. So at this point, what you will need to do is just get the, all the solutions and, and then compare. But see that the super B is becoming a little bit unbounded and maybe it's because it's the, it is in that limit you now of the Swaby diagram. So if you go and you switch, let me switch to the min mod. Okay, so I go here. And you see here that there are two variants, okay? You have the, this one with the V at, at the end and the normal one. So the one with the V at the end is specifically formulated for vector fields, okay? So usually you put it, it will give you better approximations, okay? So it's recommended, but it tends to be also a little bit more oscillatory. But see that you get some, some, some improvement 
and there. And then you have the normal, the normal one, which is the one I always recommend to use. And let me run here. Okay, and see that very nice agreement. And probably is the one you can go for more sophisticated grading gradient. No skin. So for instance, this is a very good one, the Benkata Krishnan. Okay, so this is so all this one by default they use the min mod method to apply the, this one is using a different method. So there is a different that these limiters here are discontinuous. Okay, you see that the, there is a min mod function that is discontinuous. This Benka Kristan it is a continuous function, so you have a, a nice property. So that is very well documented in the literature in CFD. You can look for that and not go into details. That is part of an advanced training. So see that we have this difficult to say if it is better or no, you will need to compare with other, but you see that there are some slight differences. Okay. And then also in time, we can go in time. So let me go in time and let me use this one. So probably this one, it will be a little bit oscillatory. So when you have problems like this, I don't recommend you to use no backward method or a pure, pure crack nickel. So because they have the tendency to generate some wiggles or oscillations. Okay. But actually see that improve a lot. Okay. See that here probably is becoming a little bit unbounded, but it has some, some, some improve, improvement. And if I change to backward, see that the backward is diverging immediately. Okay. So severe cases stay with the crack nickel zone and do not put one. If I put here one, maybe also it will, it will diverge because that method. Okay. Well, it's converging. Maybe will give some oscillations. Let's see. Okay. I see here. Clearly you see those oscillations and that is just due to the time discretization and there, there is nothing that we can do. Okay. Because we are already using a good limiting skin. So this is just due to the discretization skin. So do you see the effect here that we go zero seven and that zero seven manage to reduce the also oscillations that you have there. So probably previously I mentioned that that is the value I like to, to, to use. And here clearly you see, you see in action that it has an influence. So then what else we can do here? So I would show you uh, also the uh, energy equation unique to the, to each term that appears in that and those equations that you have in the energy unique to discretize those. So basically what you are doing, this is what you're doing there. So we're using this method. And again, it is extremely recommended to use a second order methods. Okay. You can go for a wind, but you are going to add some, 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 a lot numerical diffusion. So you need to use a uh, second order accurate and be careful because this also, they are very unstable. In some cases it's very tricky. Okay. So in this case, the linear wind is working, but might be some other cases that is made better to use mean mod. But again, this is severe physics that you need to, instead of going with a large CFL number, it's better to reduce the CFL number to keep it about, about one. And when you keep CFL about one, it's likely that all these methods, the linear wind, they're working, they're going to work fine. Okay. You see here, these are an additional variables. Okay. That you solve for the equations. Okay. So in, in during the, during the training or you know, the compressor, we're going to just address that. Okay. But there is no, no, not a problem. You just get the equation as you will see. So that's all for the, this case. Okay. At this point, also what you can do is increase the CFL number. You will see that. Okay. But, uh, uh increase your Delta T. You can go with larger de de Delta T, but be careful that this is quite a difficult, but you know how to stabilize everything. So at this point we're done with the numerics and I think we demystify 
everything all these dictionaries as you go back to the first week and you open all your your dictionaries now you're going to know what is happening and why you have those options there so that's all for this case thank you very much for your attention and see you in the next module bye